Tracking your goals will make you 33% more likely to achieve them, according to this study at Michigan State University. When I first started tracking my net worth in 2019, it completely transformed how I manage my finances and has helped me grow my wealth. I created a spreadsheet with a visual dashboard, which I'll share with you for free and guide you through. But first, let's talk about why track your net worth to begin with. Tracking your net worth is a lot like tracking weight loss. Small, consistent actions drive huge results. Research published by UConn and the University of Pennsylvania showed that weight loss participants who tracked their diets regularly saw significant outcomes. Those who tracked around 40% of the time lost 5% of their weight in six months, and participants who tracked 70% of the time lost 10%. The key takeaway is tracking is correlated with success towards your goals, even if it's not perfect. The same principle applies to your finances. By tracking your net worth monthly or quarterly, you can spot trends, make smarter decisions, and stay on course towards your financial goals. Just like weight loss, it's about consistency, not perfection. Focusing on broad metrics like total savings, investments, and debt is enough to keep you on track without overcomplicating the process. I like to say that tracking your net worth is like steering a ship with a compass. Without that compass, you won't know if you begin to drift off course. Tracking doesn't have to be difficult. Using tools like the simple Google Sheet I will provide to you makes it easy and rewarding. Setting it up takes about 10 to 20 minutes and updating it monthly only takes me about two minutes every month. Let's walk through the tracker I created. You can grab the free spreadsheet from my website. I put the link in the description and I'll guide you now through it step by step. If you don't wanna use a spreadsheet, stick around until the end and I'll show you some other ways to track your net worth in Canada. I'm gonna show you the end result of this net worth tracker. You'll be able to enter in your current net worth, your net worth goal, and it'll show you the shortfall needed to reach that goal. It also has some visual representations, which I'll go into in more detail as we go along here. And also has some net worth summary data you can look at as well. Okay, if you go into the link in the description, you'll be able to get a copy of this net worth tracker sent to you for free. And basically we're gonna just go through these steps. So if you get lost, just refer back to these steps or you could also just rewatch this video. So the first step is to download this Google Sheet and make a copy for yourself to save on your own computer or Google Drive or whatever you keep your documents. So you just have it going file, make a copy. And instead of naming it just name or copy, I would put the year. So let's do this one for 2025. I always recommend to start the network tracker at the beginning of each year. You can start at mid-year, but set it to the beginning of the year, which I'll show you how to do. Okay, so you made a copy here. So now it's 2025 net worth tracker. Okay, the first step is to go to your inputs and we'll put our start month. You could double click this and I would put it at the beginning of your current year. Even if you're in December, you're filling this out right now, put it at the beginning of your current year. And then for the net worth goal, let's put uh, 1.5 million. You can put this to whatever you want. And here's a pro tip. I set a recurring monthly reminder at the first of each month to fill out this network tracker. And it takes me about two minutes to do it. And it's a really great way to stay uh, easily committed to this process. Another thing is if you're not sure what to put for your net worth goal, refer to my very popular video here about the average net worth in Canada and also how your net worth increases after $100,000. I have two separate videos on this topic, so check them out if you're not sure what to set here. Okay, I'm just gonna start by just filling out some data. This is not my personal data. This is just a fictional uh, person here. So let's start with uh, RBC checking account. So you'll wanna go into all your current assets, uh, things like cash, things like GICs, things like uh, savings accounts. Uh, you could put it all here. So let's just enter that in here, 15,000. Uh, let's say he has a tangerine uh, savings account at uh, 2000 whatever dollars. Put a cash account, $200. He has PayPal. Okay, you see we ran out of room here. He has more accounts. So all you have to do is just increase this Dropbox if that happens to you. So let's say I have a Wise prepaid visa. That's 500 CI direct savings account. Let's just go with a lot of accounts for this guy. So I see this with a lot of clients. Some of them have a ton of different accounts. Well, simple cash. And this just involves you going through all of your accounts and just putting them here, your current value. 
Okay, let's say EQ Bank uh, card, a thousand. Let's say EQ Bank savings. Okay, so now that we have the current assets here, I would just sit back and take a quick look at it. So for this person, I would recommend really trimming down the number of their accounts. There's really, in most cases, not a big need for more than three or four, maybe five different accounts. Um, this is just gets too much to track and too cumbersome. So that's the first thing I would look at if I were this person. Oh, you can also put car back in current assets. So that's up to you. You'll have to depreciate it as time goes on. But that's another very common current asset that I didn't include here. Okay, next up, I would put your long-term assets here. And these are things like registered accounts, um, things like property. Oh, and by the way, this spreadsheet will work uh, as a single person or if you want to do it together as a, a whole household. Okay, so you have your TDRSP here, saving for the kids, uh, well, simple, uh, TFSA, that's 160,000 or so. Let's say well, simple, RSP, that's 105,000 or so. Let's say you got a Quest Trade Lira. Uh, all right, so that's about this amount. And let's just add one more so I can show you the drop down again. EQ Bank FHSA, which is a great new account, 14. And let's say this house is, I know you can't have a house and an FHSA, but let's just, in this example, let's say that you can. Uh, so let's say you have $400,000 here your house is worth that amount. Okay, so these are your long-term assets. So you can see that this sums up the entire row. You could check the formulas here. Uh, yeah, so this sums everything up here. So you have 167,000 in current assets, 919,000 in long-term assets here. Okay, so next up, let's take a look at our current liabilities. These are things like credit cards, some revolving line of credit, car loans, things like that. So you could have something like your credit card. I would put the bank. Uh, so say he has 6,000 in credit cards. So he has two credit cards. Oftentimes people have a very uh, large amount of credit cards, like three to five of them. Uh, okay, so say BMO here, $8,000. So you have a car loan and it's $15,000 here. And then it has a line of credit. Okay, 5,000. Okay, and this one fits all into this. So we don't need to do this drop down. And this sums up to $34,000 of current liabilities. And now let's take a look at long-term liabilities. All right, so we got our student loans still. He's got $25,000 in student loans. And let's see, he still has a mortgage of $300,000 on his house. Oops. And he has a home equity line of credit, $50,000. And these are all fake numbers. Um, it's just purely for example's sake. Yours are gonna look a lot different than this. And it sums up to $375,000. Okay, now that you have one month, this is what your dashboard is going to look like. So you can see your net worth. It's going to show $670,000. It has your assets, your liabilities. Net worth goal is $1.5 million. And your shortfall is $822,000. Well, you got your total assets, liabilities, net worth. You can also see it down here. So it shows if you just have one month, this is not going to mean anything or this. I'll show you how this works. Uh, as we fill out the data here. And let's not worry about this for now. This only will only make sense once you have more data. This one you could take a little bit of a look at, like what's your current assets versus liabilities. You can see that it's mostly long-term assets you have and long-term liabilities. Okay, so going back to this input, let's assume now that we're at the end of the year and that I have filled out everything here. So let's assume all these numbers have been filled out. And you can see that only took me maybe a few minutes to set up here. Um, it'll probably take you some time to dig out the data, but after you get it all set up, it's super easy to fill out. Okay, I'm gonna fill out this data off screen here just to speed things up and I'll show you how that goes. Okay, we're back now and you can see that I have all the data filled out for current assets, long-term assets. We're at the end of the year of 2025. Uh, it'll show you your total amount and how much it's changed within or throughout the year. So you could kind of go through this all and check and I know these numbers are kind of, kind of a lot right now. It's maybe it's a bit overwhelming for some people, which is why I created this dashboard. So now that we have all this data, this dashboard becomes a lot more valuable and insightful. So you can see your net worth now is $733,000 at the end of the year. So it's increased by 8%, which is great. You have your total assets here, 1.1 million. Your total liabilities, 370,000. Net worth goal, 1.5 million. And we're just almost half of the way there to our net worth goal. Taking a look, as you progress throughout the year, you should be taking a look at this network trend. Hopefully you should be seeing this gradual increase, but of course you're probably gonna see some dips. 
And you're going to want to identify what happened during these dips. So you can see here from, you know, like April to May, there was a pretty big dip. So going back to your data, let's take a look at what happened here. You can even look at the summary. First of all, it's be like, okay, wow, my, my assets, my total assets uh, really took a bit of a dive here. So what happened? So let's take a look now. Let's go back to the data tables right here, your long-term assets. Uh, you can take a look at your RSP and be like, wow, this dropped an insane amount, almost 60%. Um, or this Lira dropped by a huge amount as well, over $100,000. So these are definitely red flags of concern that you should really look at. It might be a cause of reevaluating your risk tolerance if this has been a really difficult time for you to go through this. Um, just having this representation really helps you kind of hone in on any issues. But from that, it kind of looks like it, it picked back up and everything uh, proceeded nicely after that. And you can see here, it's a breakdown of your assets versus liabilities. So it's 953,000 in long-term assets versus $340,000 in liabilities. And you can see it graphed as uh, assets versus liabilities trend here as well. So we can see, even though the liabilities have just slightly decreased, it's definitely the assets where this variation occurs. So all this is great information and you can take this as well down here. You can see each month what the progress is. So some months, there was huge drops, like this one had $110,000 drop. So in this case, in this scenario, it was like a big market uh, dip for this person. For this specific account, he had some very high risky assets. So it's something that he might want to reevaluate. And you can see though, it's, it's steadily, uh, the, the latter half of this year looked a lot better. It also shows you the percentage increase and decrease of your net worth throughout the, the, the year. So after you have each year filled out and you've analyzed the data, I would create another spreadsheet, just make another copy of this delete all the data and just fill it in for say 2026, 2027. And then each year you could look back to see how you did compared to the previous year. So it, you, you just accumulate this basically um, balance sheet, I guess, of your net worth throughout the years. I find this very valuable um, data to go through and I really enjoy looking at this every month as well. If my net worth is going up, if it's going down, it's a little concerning, which is good to know too. Okay, now that I walked you through this custom spreadsheet that I built, here are some alternative ways to track your net worth in Canada. There are several tools available for Canadians to track their net worth, but each one comes with its own costs or limitations. Here's a breakdown, and just to note, I'm not affiliated with any of these companies. The first is Wealthica. Wealthica connects to your financial accounts and provides an automatic overview of your net worth. While it's convenient, certain advanced features are locked behind a paid subscription, which can add up over time. The next was Mint, but it's now replaced by Quicken. Mint used to be free and very popular in Canada, but it has been replaced by Quicken, which now requires a paid subscription. While Quicken offers robust financial tracking, its cost may not be worth it when free alternatives exist. The third is Pocket Guard. So the first two I've mentioned I've used and I really like both of them, uh, but this one I didn't actually use, but I heard it's good. It's a budgeting app that helps monitor your spending and manage your finances. While it offers a free version, access to premium features comes with a monthly or annual fee. It's another option to consider if you're comfortable paying for automation. So going back to my personal spreadsheet that I made, I've tried a lot of these different tools and this is by far my favorite method because it's completely free, gives you full control and is highly customizable. I find it rewarding to update the spreadsheet monthly as it keeps me engaged with my finances and it has a nice visual overview of the net worth goal that I'm trying to hit. While tools like Wealthica, Quicken, and PocketGuard offer automation, they come with costs. A spreadsheet, on the other hand, is free and puts you fully in charge of your tracking process. Choose what works best for your goals and budget. As Peter Drucker, considered the father of modern business management, once said, what gets measured gets managed. Tracking your net worth is a simple step that leads to big financial wins. Grab the free tracker on my website and if you need customized financial planning, Blueprint Financial is here to guide you. Please like and subscribe for more tips.